Sweating. Probably should have looked at this before we started this video. Hey, welcome back to The Average Kitchen. Mark here with a C. Today, I am going to review a KitchenAid three and a half cup food chopper. And we're gonna run it through a series of tests and see if it could do what it says it could do. We are not affiliated with KitchenAid. We bought this ourselves, roughly 50 bucks Canadian. Today, we're gonna to, uh, see if it could chop and puree like it says it can. So pretty small unit, compact. Uh, it's kind of, maybe kind of hard to see. It's kind of a dark blue color. It just comes with a single blade. That's pretty much it. So we're gonna put this on here. I've never used this before. So that's in place. Plug it in, relatively short cord, which is a bit of a pet peeve for me on a lot of these. And then we have this lid now, I believe. Do you know the purpose of that, Jamie? Nope. Me neither. We should probably start like looking in the book, but we don't. Anyway, uh, I've got an onion here, just kind of quarter that up, and we'll just see how it does chopping that onion. Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. Ah, the blade wasn't down in, in place. That's a uh, Mark fault, not uh, KitchenAid. And we have the uh, on and off switch here. And you got your selector between shop and period. Okay. Probably should have looked at this before we started this video. Sweating. Okay, so this little doodad here is the pulse button, I guess whenever you have that in place properly, which we probably didn't. So they call this a drizzle basin, this small thing right here. I would think, because I don't see an on and off switch, that I just don't have this on properly. Let's reset here. Okay, so that's locked into place. That is in place, we'll throw our onion back in. I still don't see what I'm doing. Ah. Oh, you have to hold this button. That is the on and off switch, is this little trigger here. So there's a chop button and a puree, obviously it changes the speed. They call it a pulse button, but really it's the on and off button. Okay, so then we open that up. Most definitely, very, very well chopped onion. So as I wipe the sweat from my brow here in, in, in a level of embarrassment that uh, I should have checked this before, but we are the average kitchen, and this, even though it wasn't an unboxing, it is the first time I've ever used it. Let me empty this out and we'll be on to the next test. So I apologize for bumbling around there. I think I have it figured out now. Basically, you have to put that in, that locks into place. Your blade goes down, locks into place. So now I've just got some raw carrots that I'm just gonna chop up. I don't know if I saw, at least on the onion, I don't know if I saw a huge difference between the chop and the puree. So I'm gonna put the lid back on here. So this is all locked into place. We'll start on the chop function. I don't know if you'll see a difference, but basically your on and off switch is this trigger, which I can't say I'm a huge fan of, but. Okay, so the chop, let's have a look at the chop function here. It's actually chopped quite well. Really mince that down even further. You'll hear the sound difference in the blade. So it's essentially almost like a powder now. So there is, there, when it come, comes to the carrot, there's definitely a difference. But I, so far, again, first time user, didn't read the book, so that's on me. But first time user, I find it a little finicky with that little thumb switch. I steamed some carrots, so I wanted to sort of simulate making almost like a carrot puree or almost like a baby food. So I'll get this emptied and I'll throw in those, uh, pure, or those uh, steamed carrots and we'll see how that works out. So I steam these in advance and let them cool so that we didn't have some carrot explosion. They're still a little bit on the warm side. You can see some steam rolling off them. And uh, while I was emptying out that carrot reservoir, Jamie and I were discussing this drizzle porch, or what was the name they used for it, Jamie? Drizzle basin. And I said to Jamie, I said, well, there's no hole, but there actually is. I don't, you probably won't be able to see this. There's this very, very small hole on the side. So we'll see how this puree goes. We may try that drizzle basin and uh, pour a little bit of liquid down there and see what it does. So there's our carrots. You can still see they are still steaming. So we want a puree, which we're in place here. Let's have a look. 
So they are getting pureed, but my experience with doing purees like that is sometimes you need to add a little bit of liquid. So I just grabbed a soup spoon. I could tell you that that drizzle basin is quite small. So let's see if we can pour that in. It does go down. But of course you need your hand to turn it on. So unless you were doing olive oil, avocado oil, something like that, where you could pour it with one hand, in this case here, I can't run it and use the drizzle basin at the same time with the design that they have here. It's certainly looking good. Like most blenders or appliances like that, sometimes you need a little bit of help to pull it off the side. I do find that these products can be killer on your silicone spatulas. The blades are like super, super sharp. So you definitely want to be careful of that. I'm gonna throw in a little bit more liquid and I'm gonna get past the novelty of this drizzle basin because I don't see it really being that beneficial in this circumstance. And let's see how we puree now. My kids are older now, but when my kids were young, I used to make homemade baby food. And this definitely appears to be nice and pureed and it would be perfect for, you know, young toddler or young baby, not that young of a baby, but uh, you know, maybe a one year old to be able to eat, starting to eat solids. You can puree the carrots this way and actually looks like it did a pretty good job, but there was some work involved in getting there. So let me give that a clean up and let's try to see how it crushes almonds. All right, so the next test we're gonna do is some uh, raw almonds here. Roughly, I didn't measure, roughly half a cup three quarter of a cup of almonds. So we'll put those in. And I think in this case, we're gonna wanna chop them, not puree them. So we'll put that to the chop setting and we'll get our lid on. Well, those are definitely chopped almonds. Ran it through some tests. Here's my thoughts. My initial feeling on this product is I don't like it, and I'll tell you why. The trigger system, the on-off system is too finicky. I get that it's a safety feature that you have to have your thumb on it to turn it on, and maybe over time, if you buy this, you'll get more used to it and find those sort of sweet spots that it just fits in or seats in better. But as a first time user of this product, and in fairness, as I mentioned before, I didn't read the book. I don't feel like you should have to read a book on something that's such a simple product. So I definitely found it finicky to get, essentially I guess there's three positionings that need to be done. You need to put this into place and it needs to be locked in. But I also find that this sort of moves around a little bit. Then this needs to be, if you can probably hear it, there, that needs to be locked down. And then this, normally on a lot of food processors, you, you start over here and slide it across. But you, like, yeah, you can, but again, sometimes when you're pushing against that, that comes out of place. So this should be ready to go. There, so it took a couple pushes. I think it could be designed better. It's an inexpensive product at 50 bucks. I think that once you get it into position, it works well. It obviously did an amazing job on the almonds, did a great job on the onions, chopped the carrots, so it's just getting to that sweet spot. So the functionality of it, it works really well. The usability, at least first time user, I uh, was less than impressed. That's our video, hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave us a comment, and we'll see you on the next one.